Hello everyone, and I am very tired. I am very tired. What you're about to see is going to be a drawing of prequel adventures Katia Monaghan, who is the lead character of that little webcomic. I like to do little fan art things of this whenever I'm in my downtime. And here we go. But uh, I like to do little fan art things of this in my downtime. I don't know, I'm not really sure why. I'm not like a huge fan of the webcomic, like, oh, I'm the, the biggest... No, no, nothing like that. But, you know, she's just fun to draw, I guess, and it's pretty easy to draw. It's one of the little side things I like doing on uh, 4chan threads. I like to draw for those guys. And usually the drawings don't take very long anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I am working on the animation still. But I probably could have actually gotten it done this month. But it would have required me to do something like 1,000 frames every single day for an entire week. Uh, just to be able to get it out the door. Which I have actually done before, believe it or not. But it kind of makes me go insane. And also makes me want feel like I should be in the hospital. So I decided, you know what? The reason why it's taking so long is because I'm trying to put more quality into it than I used to. Not that this is going to be... You know, it's not going to look like a feature-length film or something, Monty Stretch of the Imagination. But it's going to look a little bit better than it used to. Which I'm trying to do. Now that I have Patreon money, the whole purpose of going to Patreon was to enable me to take my time. So I kind of had to choke down on my own bit and say, you know what, just get over yourself. Just release something, you know, release more things in between. Uh, you're already doing the Dark Souls thing and whatnot. And just concentrate on releasing the things that are of higher quality. Because you can't really improve if you're only focused on creating things and releasing them as quickly as possible. But anyways, that's, that, that's the story behind that. But, as far as this goes, yes, Prequel Adventures, this little bitty webcomic, you can go check it out, pre prequeladventures.com. Pretty cute little comic. It's about a little... It's based on the Elder Scrolls universe. It is about... This character, Kedia, who actually, that's not even her real name, I don't think, is something that was just chosen for her because she was trying to make a new start, a first start in the land of uh, wherever Oblivion, what the hell, what was that called? Cyrodiil? I can't remember. But anyways, uh, yeah, she, she comes to this land, the same setting that Oblivion takes place in, and starts a new life for herself. Because her entire existence has been one screw up after the other. And as you might imagine, nothing really improves all that much. And she's still working on working on it. Uh, let's see. Should I talk about the primary or talk about that? Well, I'll, I'll briefly say that... Uh, no, nah, I guess I'll just go into the primary stage. Here, what we're looking at here is just me trying to come up with some sort of landscape. I did not feel particularly good, as I said, whenever I was doing this. I was rushing the animation. I was already not in very high spirits anyways. And by the way, this is all going to be post-com because of that. Because, one, I w wasn't really sure how far this was going to go. And I did not feel like doing commentary at the same time I was trying to draw. As I was actually finishing this drawing, I felt like I was about to pass out. And actually kind of did at one point. Uh, but as far as, uh, the, the structure of this goes, I had sort of artist block, which I normally don't really ever have at the time. So it took me quite a bit of time just to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. At first I thought I was going to do something more action oriented, but I decided, you know what, let's just go with something that's a bit more dynamic in the composition versus something that is overly insistent about, uh, how dramatic is thing because that's not really her character at the beginning. She's not a very action-oriented character. She has gotten into a lot of trouble, though, that's for sure. But the, uh, the yes, the, the composition, I was just trying to focus more on uh, making it look nice. One of the things that people have been complimenting me on as far as the art, especially of her, goes, because one of the reasons why I do a little art of her on the site, it's not so much her or the comic, it's uh, it's a means of me to be able to try new things. Uh, new things that are actually pretty fast to try. And usually what I've been doing with her is uh, things that focus on more color theory. And in this case, what I wanted to do, I decided, is not focus too much on 
uh, form and dynamic movement or anything like that, but more on the painting aspect of it. And I decided early on that I would just go ahead and get the lines done in Paint Tool Sai, which you are seeing here, yes. Yes, it's Paint Tool Sai, for the love of God. YouTube comment, people. Every single video. Every single... I know some of you are being ironic, but... Yes, it's Paint Tool Sai. It's Paint Tool Sai. Yes. But someone will still ask anyways. But I thought I would go ahead and get the line work done in Paint Tool Sai, and actually take it over into Photoshop, which I normally don't really use. I've gotten where I don't really care too much for Photoshop, even whenever I was recording this because of Photoshop's tendency to use too much memory and whatnot. It has all sorts of little minor quirks about it that I don't really care for. But uh, I decided, you know what, go ahead and use Photoshop. Because Photoshop is much better as far as coloring goes, which you wouldn't think. It's just a photo, it's a photo tool. It's made for editing photographs. But as far as coloring and making things... Because here's why. It's because it has the ability to choose between... Uh, very specific uh, uh, brush types. Whereas in Paint Tools Eye, you are very much so limited. You can't use custom brushes, as far as I know. You might be able to, I don't know. But it's something I've never actually found. But uh, I will briefly say here, I was going absolutely haywire with these fucking hands. Oh, this fucking hand. I had so th This took me like an hour to get this one goddamn hand done. Because one is that hands are incredibly difficult to draw in the first place. Uh, unless you're doing some sort of limited style, like little noodle fingers or something. Then you can just do whatever the fuck you want to. Who cares? But, uh, it's... I... I kept trying to figure out how am I going... Because, here's the thing. Uh, anytime you're doing anything that is sort of moving towards the viewer of the camera, you're going to have to deal with foreshortening. And especially with something like limbs, or, you know, like a forearm, or uh, a leg, or in this case, a hand and a forearm, you're, it's going to end up looking a bit more unnatural. And even if you're going by photographs or something like that, you'll notice that if you're drawing, and you start looking at the photo and trying to replicate it, you will realize very quickly, this looks really unusual. And it's because human beings are not used to looking at things from certain perspectives. For example, um, looking from the, like, say you're, you're much shorter than someone, like, uh, or someone is very tall, or you're just at that weird sort of perspective and you're looking up at their face. It's very difficult to draw that position because it looks very unnatural because people aren't used to really looking at people that way. Where you're almost looking at the complete underside, I don't know why I'm, you can't see this, look at it, look at, look at what I'm doing viewer that cannot see me, you're looking at the underside of their chin. And uh, it, it's a very awkward pose to draw. And I, I really have a lot of respect for people that can pull it off because I certainly don't, uh, it's just, I guess I don't really do too well with it. But I try from time to time. But it, it, it took me forever to get that one hand down just because a few things actually were technically sort of right but did not look natural as a result because they were sort of pointing right at the camera. So I ended up having to just keep doing it until I came up with something that looked both natural and right at the same time. For me, I was checking the pose here to make sure that the proportions and everything were correct. Uh, for me, since my style is sort of, if I have a style, is sort of semi-realistic, but at the same time not really, I have to have... I can't really rely on cartoony-looking hands, for example. Like, I could easily have this made, like, Adventure Time hands. And have, you know, each, like, the thumb and, you know, three fingers. Just be little bulbs that are sprouting out of their palm. But that doesn't... That's not really me. It doesn't look right for the style that I'm doing, so... I ended up having to fiddle with that for quite some time. Uh, as far as the rest of this goes, composition-wise, and of course, I'm not sure some people are going to complain about the fact she has five toes. How horrifying! Well, too fucking bad. She gets five toes. I just—I actually was talking with Kaz, uh, Kazra, the, the person that actually makes the comic, and I asked him how many toes should she have because I know that you draw her with three, and he said, "Well, she 
Of course, I draw her with three, but she should probably have four. Because... Let's see if I can follow the logic of this. As far as the universe of the Elder Scrolls go, Katia, by the way, is from... Uh, she, she is a, a Khajiit. She is one of the kind of cat people that uh, are part of that universe. Like, there's, you know, Argonites, and there's different kinds of beast people, and then there's the Myr, who are the elves, and kind of the the branches of the elves. And uh, then there are... I don't think men are... No, men are actually humans, I should say, or whatever. Are uh, I think they're actually not even from Tamriel itself. They're not from the world. Like, if, say, they're living on Earth, they're not. It, the place is not called Earth, but then uh, they would actually be aliens. So as far as the logic of the universe goes, I don't know why they wrote it this, this way, but uh, humans are actually aliens. Pretty weird. But, uh, she, yeah, she's a Khajiit. And one of the weird things about Khajiit, which there are many weird things about Khajiit, is that uh, there's many different kinds of them. Let's see. How, oh, fuck, how am I going to explain this? This is already... So goddamn complicated. Uh, once, once Mama Khajiit gets pregnant with whatever, then whenever she gives birth, depending on the phases of the moon, she can give birth to any number of things. There are like seven or eight, maybe six, I can't remember, different kinds of Khajiit. She... <sighs> Kadia is a Suthe rot, I think. And then there's, like, the Suthe, and then there's... I'm not going to name all these fucking things off. But there's a lot of them. Some of them look just like human beings, except they kind of look like they have face paint on. Some of them are giant tiger people. Some of them are literal tigers. They're just, they're just tigers, or leopards, or whatever. And, uh... Then there's, like, really gigantic ones that are so big that they look like, you know, a horse ate another horse, and then a rhino ate them, and then it turned into a cat, and that's what it looks like because it's so goddamn huge. And then there's literal house cats. Some of them are just house cats. So, you get all sorts of weird shit. And one of the things about Kadia is I adjust my chair. Come on, chair. Oh, the sing, sing, sing better days. Never buy leather chair folks, because that shit will heat up your butt real fast. And you don't want your butt heated up. Not unless it's not unless it's a very special evening. Uh, but the the what the fuck was I saying? I shouldn't I shouldn't be making stupid jokes about my butt. As I am wont to do. Uh, but she oh yeah yeah yeah. She is uh Katie is actually the daughter of two of these Khajiit that look almost human. And they live in Hammerfell. They don't they don't come from the elsewhere. They, they don't come from the land that Khajiits actually call home. They are, they immigrated from there over to Hammerfell, and she was raised amidst humans. And since her parents also looked sort of human because of their weird Khajiit subspecies bullshit that they have going on, um, as a result of that, she was the only one that looked like a a cat. She's the only one that looked that way. By the way, you're going to get furious with me, erasing these butterflies. Because I go through many trials and tri tribulations trying to get these fucking butterflies just right. But as a result of being raised amongst other human beings in Hammerfell, and her parents not looking like her, she ended up with a lot of problems with her confidence and a lot of problems... Just in general, feeling like she was fitting in in the world. So, what kind of the, the core problem with Kadia is that she is not really certain who she is, and she has problems trying to fit in with even her own people because she wasn't raised around them. She basically acts just like a Hammerfell person would, except she just so happens to be a Khajiit. So, as a result, she kind of feels like she is completely isolated in the world. And one of the reasons why that she is immigrating to, Sir, or whatever it is, Oblivion World, the, the land of horrifying faces, uh, the reason why she's going there is to try to start over, because her life has been one big fuck-up right after the other. 
very positive role model, right? Yeah, yeah. But of course, this is without spoiling the comic if you haven't seen it. She ends up uh, kind of just going right back into her old ways as she finds it, as she has one failure after the other. And, uh, lo and much like an artist, the core problem with her is that she tends to blame, she tends to put too much pressure on herself. She, uh, most of her problems are extensions of her kind of creating her own problems. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I should probably send something about the drawing. Uh, like I said, these butterflies, as I've said in prior videos, whenever you're working, make sure that you flip your canvas over and over again. Especially whenever you're, you're working digitally, because you... Oh, I could never get those... Yeah, just... I, I don't think I even keep this butterfly. It took me like an hour to draw all these butterflies. How much time did the, everything take? Let me take a look at this, actually. Uh, but yeah, the... What the fuck was I saying? The butterflies, the butterflies... There we go, that, that's the final one, yeah. That's the final one, I think. Probably not. No, it's, it wasn't the final one at all. I lied. Uh, but the... Uh, I can't even remember what the fuck I was even trying to say. So let's just start a new thought, shall we? This is the joys of post-commentary. Uh, let's, let's talk about... No, I'm getting distracted here. But anyways, yeah, I'll just talk about Katia again. She ends up going through a lot of trials and tribulations, and even now she isn't quite there. She's trying to learn how to actually be a competent person, and she can't quite figure it out. And what I was trying to say, as I remember what I was talking about, is uh, she's a lot, lot of like an artist, or a lot like a young person, and that she always is very self-defeating. Ah, here we go, into Photoshop. As I got the lawn work done. You'll notice that I didn't complete all of them. I'll, I'll say that in a second. Uh, but she's a lot like a lot of young people in that she doesn't quite know where she fits in in the world. And she is constantly self-defeating and she's certain of her own defeat before she actually tries and so on. Uh, but yeah, going to the line work, I didn't complete all the line work like on say the, uh, like the horizon, for example. Because that's where a lot of light's going to be blending in anyways. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with the horizon yet. And a lot of those lines I would end up erasing anyways. Uh, but... Let's see. I'm doing the... the I was sort of doing zoning here. Normally what I would do is make a layer for every single color that I wanted to edit. Say I would make a layer... You've seen this before. I would make a layer for the shirt, I would make a layer for the pants, I would make a layer for the skin, and I would say, or the fur, or whatever. And I would make a, you know, just everything. Sky, clouds, butterfly one, butterfly two, and so on. But, since this is Photoshop, and Photoshop has the feature of having very poor memory handles, or whatever. Uh, because of that, I decided I can't do that. And the very last little bit, I actually drew for about five hours straight. And towards the end, the video, thankfully, since this is all sped up, you can't see it anyways, the video began to get very choppy because the... You wouldn't think it would matter. I mean, this computer has plenty of uh, RAM to work with. But just the way that Photoshop works, it, you know, it's just like that. I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to do any sort of... Uh, live 60 frames per second thing with uh, Photoshop anytime soon. But uh, that, that's the reason why I did that, whatever I said in the first place. I can't remember. I can't remember. What do you people want from me? Why are you even watching this? Why am I even trying in life? Anyways, I really like the, the, the colors on the butterflies. Uh, one of the reasons why I include, included the butterflies, aside from, you know, just trying to be cute. Oh, look, butterflies are so pretty. So pretty. One of the reasons why is because I wanted to have a lot of uh, variations in color. Because, again, one of the reasons why I was doing this is to try out new little ways of uh, trying to make things seem more plaguey. You know, trying to flesh out my style a bit more. One of the things I eventually want to try out is... what What is her name? Actually, let me go check right now. Well, I also... 
look at what my rolls were doing. Actually, my internet might still be down. Hope it goes. Oh, there it goes. Uh, but let's see. The first part was 37 minutes, then 2 hours and 10 minutes, and then about. No, yeah, that's right, about 4 hours. Four. Man, man, my math is terrible. I'm terrible at math. But it was like seven hours or so it took me to draw this whole thing. Uh, but I was trying to pull up Sakimi-chan. Uh, th one of the few people that I support on Patreon. I'm actually looking to endorse a few more people uh, so that I can get... I I'm trying to focus in my Patreon on... Uh, Diverting as much attention as possible to other artists and things like that. People that I feel are connected to me in some way or are related in some way that I also want to help gain exposure with. And uh, Sakimi-chan does not need any more exposure, I think, because actually she's making way more money than I am now. But uh, she's one of the people who... She, I've talked about her before, actually, but I didn't know what her name was. Uh, she's much, much better at faces than I am. Like, by a huge, huge long shot. One of the things I want to do as soon as she releases her brush settings and has a few more uh, long, uh, bit longer demonstrations in her videos is to try to replicate what she's doing. So one of my future projects might be to have something be a, uh, a portrait in which I just try to do that Unless I fail completely in every single way. In which case, I guess I'll just keep that to myself, won't I? Yes. But don't demonstrate your failure to the world, folks. Of course, I don't really have that lux luxury. This is one of the reasons I was kind of worried about doing this. is because I did not feel like drawing in the first place. But I knew that I needed to get something out before the end of this month. Actually, I don't think I have to as far as Patreon goes. But I really wanted to make sure that I released something. Because I really felt like an asshole for uh, having it been this long. Because I'm getting things from people all the time asking, how come I haven't gotten a, an update yet? How come you know I'm not getting emails? And it's like, you're not getting emails because I haven't released anything in a while. And I haven't released anything in a while just because it takes so long to make these things. And apparently I am wasting too much time. But anyways, uh, yeah, check her out if you want to... I guess, climax all over your monitor over how good her faces are. And her, you know, she doesn't put as quite as much work into, say, the clothing and everything goes. But that's like saying that 99 isn't as big a number as 100. You know, it's still way, way better than probably anything that I can do as far as that goes. But uh, the, if you want to learn to do something realistic or kind of demi-realistic, She's a good person to look to. There's a few other related people. I'm not going to go down the list, but you get the idea. Uh, but th that might be something future is what I was getting at. I don't know. Uh, as far as the color works, here it goes. One of the disadvantages of not having uh, your lines put down for everything is that you can't really zone as well as you normally could have, say if you're wanting things off. But here I decided to just go ahead and start working up my color theory. Uh, since so much of this is, I decided to go with the sunset thing, that's the thing that you, I, you know, I wanted to start with because that was what was going to end up dominating the rest of the image. Because as a result of it being a sunset, everything is going to have a reddish, orange, yellow tint to everything, as opposed to a, uh, say a noon lighting system in which everything would just sort of have that kind of light, yellowish, natural hue to everything. Uh, one of the little tricks I like to do whenever I'm doing things like this, just start with black or start with white or something, and then just colorize it. Or if you're in paint, uh, paint tool side, you need to have a little bit of saturation or else it won't take correctly. And uh, that way you can just... Try to go to uh, extremes, in other words. Uh, try to go with... Very dark blacks try to go with very high whites so that you can at least scale back. If you try to not be aggressive in your images, then you're probably not going to have much success. Here, this is one the reason why I was using Photoshop. 
Because you could see me as I was doing the, the, those clouds, I was not using a normal round brush. I was using a brush that was made for that sort of thing. Not specifically clouds, I'm not really certain exactly. Uh, but this all the little things, I'm not really used to Photoshop, so you could see me throughout this entire thing just trying different little brushes and just seeing what happens. Uh, which is what you have to do if you're trying to learn. Just keep trying things. Even if you don't think they work, just keep trying. Just keep trying new things. And uh, But a lot of the, the way that you make a Photoshop image look good, Photoshop painting, is just very specific use of brushes. If, say, you're learning... Like, say, if you're watching Bob Ross, which I used to do when I was much younger. By the way, right here, I'm going back over this whole thing and trying to reduce that in opacity or something. To try to get it to blend in with the sky while at the same time um, having its own distinct shape and color. Because uh, as things get further into the background, they naturally fade into the uh, atmosphere, the local atmosphere. So if your sky is, say, blue, you want to make sure that anything that's very far in the distance looks sort of blue, you know, hazy blue. Uh, here I'm going back over and doing the reflection. Anytime you're going to be doing any sort of water, it's a trick that you can do. Just copy and paste whatever is above the horizon and then put it below the horizon, reduce it in opacity or erase it down, whatever you want to do. And uh, any th that's just the way that light works. As long as it's facing you, then you know that's one of the ways you do it. Here, using the little tree brush. I love this fucking tree. This little brush has saved me so much time in the animation that I'm working on right now. Because uh, background trees have been popping up a lot in that one. And this brush has saved me so much time. N and heartache? Not so much heartache. But, you know, it's been fine. Oh, here I fucked up the view setting. So if you wondered where the bottom went, it's because I hit a, a keystroke that made the view settings change at some point. Anyways, uh, I was saying something and now it's gone. Who knows where it went? Uh, what was I saying before I started rambling? I was talking about... Before I started talking about blending things into the atmosphere. I can't remember. Who, who cares? Nothing I have to say is important. Who cares? Um, here I'm just trying to make sure everything's blending correctly. Uh, I was saying something about the fact that you want to make sure that the color is all uniform. Uh, since I'm starting with the orange and, you know, sunset sky, everything has to be that same tint. I can't remember. It was it was something like that. Who cares? Uh, but as you can see, I'm just trying to I'm trying to get all the the general lighting down before I do anything else. And anytime that you're starting on a new project, you want to make sure that you get your lighting first thing. Uh, you might want to keep it to its own layer though, just in case you change your mind about things like that. And uh, if you're doing a sort of freeform painting, that is to say, you're not starting with lines, you're just putting down color and you just keep working the color uh, into zones until it actually creates a new form, then even then you want to, uh, finally got my view back, you want to uh, start with lighting, first thing. That is, say, you start with your midtone of a skin and then go into pure whites, or at least a very whitish pink you whatever skin tone you're working with, and uh, sort of zone that out with one thing, and then zone that out with one uh, tone, and then drop down into a much darker tone for your shadows, and then blend them together. That's just how it works. Uh, here, trying to get my butterflies to blend in correctly. So I don't know what the hell I was going to say about these butterflies. That will remain one of the grand mysteries of this thing that I'm doing. But I'm still really tired and I feel sort of like I'm just rambling right now because I am and it's because I've been at this for quite some time now. I'm surprised this turned out as well as it did, to be quite honest, because as I said, I felt kind of crazy when I was doing it. I couldn't quite... I was trying to make sure that this wasn't blending in exactly with the uh, clouds, but I was trying to make them look like autumn leaves. Found a... <laughs> I was exploring the brushes, and I found a butterfly brush, and I went, Oh, butterfly brush! So I just put a few back there, for just for the hell of it. Um, if you find something like that, feel free to use it. You know, if it makes you happy, just go ahead and do it. I mean, it's your art. You can do whatever the hell you want to. If you find a brush for, you know, just 
penises and you think, oh man, this this canvas could use a few more wieners in it. Yeah, go ahead. And, you know, I'm not going to stop you. I mean, I, your parents might stop you. Your husband or wife might stop you. But, you know, as long as you can get away with it, do it. Hell. Anyways, uh, I was trying to make sure that, yeah, that that wasn't... I was trying to make make a little bit more red, but it was just blending in so well. I decided, you know what, rather than worrying about that, I will just make it sort of look like the clouds, but go back over it later with a little bit more highlights, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, here, one of the little things that you can do with Photoshop that you can't with Psy is using your custom brushes. You can very easily make a texture. So there, I was just trying to come up with something that looks sort of barky, nice and barky, as far as uh, texture goes, by using a brush that has a lot of, uh, I don't even know what to say, it flays a lot on the edges. It has a lot of, uh, like here, like I'm using this brush right here on the rocks. On the rocks? And uh, it just has a lot of, on the very edges of it, it doesn't, you know, come out evenly. It's something that sort of just splits up a whole bunch. It has texture to it, in other words. Uh, go back over, do that a few times with different kinds of brushes. Uh, if you're, like, if it's bark, then make sure that it's something that has a lot of directional lines on the edges. You, you know, you don't want it to be something that has, like, a grid shape on the edge. Uh, because then you'll end up with something that sort of looks like, you know, lizard scales or something. But just make sure that uh, whenever you're doing that, going back over multiple layers and merging them back down over and over again in lower opacities to create a texture, that you are using a brush that is appropriate to whatever it is that you're trying to do. Although in my case, I actually feel like, in, as far as my <laughs> developing style that I'm trying to come up with, as far as that goes, I find that actually using the same brush for a lot of things makes it have a bit more of a painterly look to it. Which I kind of like, so I kind of try to only use, you know, like, three or four different kinds of uh, major brush strokes. Photoshop brush settings. Um, I, you know, it's not like a rule or anything, but, you know, it's, it can make something look a bit more uniform. It can make something have a bit more of a style to it. You know, just try it. You know, however you want to do it. Again, there's really no rules to this sort of thing. Just keep trying things until it sticks. That's kind of the... One of the reasons why I wanted to release something is, not you know, not just finances or anything like that, but because I want to make sure that everyone stays engaged with this. You know, with my channel, with, you know, just these sort of things in general. Because I want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to have that engagement. One of, one of the, the things I found in my life is that it's very difficult to get into something unless someone else has that interest. Say, like I was talking with Wooly about fighting games, for example, months ago, and one of the things that we both agreed on is that it's difficult to get into a fighting game if there's no one around you that cares about fighting games. You, know, you can't just sit alone in your basement practicing against the AI and then expect to roll attorney somewhere. Um, you need someone. You need that connection with people. Like, say, if you're a churchgoer or something, then uh, they have, like, a... What do they call them? Accountability partners, or things like that. People that are supposed to keep you doing things like showing up and uh, uh, reading scripture and things like that. I, just, I say that because I'm in a religious area, and that's what I thought of off the top of my head. And... Uh, that's true within anything. It doesn't have to be, you know, religion or art or anything like that. Just in general, that's how people work. You need that person. You need partners. You need, uh, you know, compatriots. You need other people that have similar interests. So I want to make sure that I stay consistent for the sake of everyone else. Because I want to make sure that everyone stays engaged for both me and for themselves. And if you are a person like Kadia over here, who is always self-defeating, that is trying out, you know, art, you know, you, you try to draw for a few seconds and then say, no, this isn't for me, I'm no good at it. You're not helping yourself. 
and I'm saying this not for the sake of giving generic advice, but if you're thinking about drawing, just do it. And I know it's not going to end up, end up the way that you want it to. Even today, with the amount of experience that I have and the fact that I'm making money doing this, um, the things that I make never turn out the way that I want them to. I'm nowhere near the skill level that I want to be at. But that's fine, because I still enjoy the process of making those mistakes. So, uh, yeah, if you're listening to this and you feel like drawing, draw. You know, don't worry too much about the fact that it ends up looking like shit. You know, it's going to. You know, the things I draw, most of the time they end up looking like shit. And you don't see them because I don't release them. I draw and then I decide, you know what, this is awful. So I'll just keep it to myself. Uh, unfortunately, with the animations, I really don't have that luxury. Since, you know, there's the time constraint and the fact that there's so much behind it that I uh, don't... I have to release it. So even though this new animation is going to look pretty good, is it, or better than the old ones were anyways, it's still going to look pretty bad in places, just because I'm trying to get it done. It's just one of those necessities. Uh, normal animation, of course, you, the, you only have to worry about a few seconds. Say if you're a uh, you're doing studio work, then you only have to, you know, animate, you know, let's say... It doesn't quite work the way that I'm describing it, but you only have to animate a few seconds, you know, usually. Unless you're, you're like the, the keyframe guy. If in, which, in the case that if you're a keyframe guy, then, you know, you have a lot more problems with that on your hands, that's for damn sure. But the, uh, sort of the lower grunts don't really, they don't have to worry about animating, you know, ten minutes of footage, in other words. Uh, whereas, since this is YouTube, of course, I, it's just me then, you know, I don't really have the luxury of worrying too much about quality. I could spend, you know, five months, like some people, which I've kind of considered that sometimes. But, you know, it's something to worry about later. But for the time being, mainly I'm trying to figure out a way to release things consistently with the highest degree of quality possible, uh, which isn't really a realistic goal, but it is a goal nonetheless. Most of my goals are completely unrealistic. Unreal and I'm a firm believer that if you're going to improve, you need to have unrealistic goals that you know are completely unobtainable. You will end up having kind of a miserable life in some ways as a result, but still you will you will improve that way. Whereas if you say, well, I'll try the draw for one hour and then I'll give up and then I'll think about it in a, like a, a few more weeks, you're not going to be going anywhere with that attitude. If you feel like you're having to force yourself to draw, then maybe you shouldn't be drawing at all. Because you apparently don't enjoy it, or you, you don't have things that you want to make. Um, one of the reasons why you draw things is because you have ideas that otherwise will never be realized. Like, say, this, you know, like this image. You know, what if this webcomic character was... Uh, by the way, she's creating fire is what she's doing. She has a latent ability to uh, manifest a fire in addition to uh, uh, recently coming up with telekinesis as well. But anyways, uh, yeah, what if this character was sitting there trying to start a fire and cook a fish or something? And uh, if you don't draw, then you'll just never see it, will you? You just have to go on to 4chan threads begging people, hey, please draw my ideas, because I can't do them myself. And uh, for people that are non-artists, usually what I uh, glean from them is that they are very frustrated because they often have these impulses, these creative uh, little things that they come up with, but they can't do anything about it. So those ideas are apparently trapped inside of them. So any time that you are drawing yourself... Just, you know, don't really take comfort in it, but, you know, just, you have the power to make anything real whenever you draw. That's the power of drawing. So, you know, respect it, and it'll respect you back. It gives you, being able to be an artist gives you such power over everything, over, you know, any idea that you can create. It's one of the, that's one of the great things that separates a human being from you know, just some random ass animal. From a rhino. You know, a rhino can't draw. A rhino can't really imagine anything. 
It just sits there being a rhino and being an asshole to people that pass by. Rhin rhinos are such... Not as bad as hippos. Hippos are such fucking cunts. Maybe you don't like that word, but... Hippos really are cunts. They really are. They're very cunty. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Anyways, uh... With that, yeah, I'm Bob Rossing it here. Yeah, just happy little trees. That's the power of art, is that you can make anything. You have power over anything. And... It doesn't really matter if you're n not enjoying it, but just realize that if you're... If you want to draw, it's for a reason. It's because you, your basic, most natural instinct. And, uh... It's good for you to try, and it's good for you to fail, but just keep trying. Which, that's what Katie has been doing. That's one of the reasons why I kind of like the comic. It's because Katie keeps on trying. She's not very good at it. She doesn't have much of a talent from much of anything that she even realizes yet. But she's still growing as a person. She's still developing. She's still learning. And she hasn't quite given up just yet. Even though she's tried from time to time. That's for damn sure. And the same with me. I've given up a few times. Like, from high school on to most of college, before I started in my graphic design courses, I actually had given up drawing. I hadn't drawn in years. And that's the reason why I'm at sort of the talent level that I'm at now. Uh, it's because I should be higher, but I didn't draw for like half a decade. And even in high school, I didn't really draw that much. It's just in the past few years, it's become more of an imperative for me, so I've just had to do it more. And see, that has paid off for me quite well. People that go on to my uh, DeviantArt, whenever they unfortunately find it, are always horrified by the abysmal quality that they find there. And for good reason. So if you keep trying, keep trying new things, then eventually you will get better. You will. I encourage you to keep trying and to get better than I am, because it's not that difficult, to be quite honest. But that's it for now. I think I'm done being crazy. Hope you enjoyed the video. The animation is soon to come. Keep painting happy bushes and keep trying new things. I will see you guys next time.